Okay, thank you very much, Rob. Uh, welcome everybody to uh, the session on the technical challenges on EOSC, as you uh, know from yesterday's talk of Ignacio. This is one of our advisory groups and uh, the task forces within this advisory group focus on implementing the technical um, uh, architecture and the interoperability in EOSC. The uh, advisory group also gives indications of strategic areas for, for future work, such as infrastructure or sharing research software. Um, as Ignacio reported yesterday, we have three task forces and all the three task forces will have like five minutes to present their um, objectives and the focus. So the first one will be on infrastructure for quality research software. The uh, focus here is on research software that is produced by researchers and used as enabler for scientific activities. Uh, this uh, presentation will be uh, given by uh, Serlene. Then we have the, uh, our, the task force on authentication and authorization infrastructures, AAI. Um, uh, Christos will give a brief outline on uh, the objectives and um, the scope of this uh, task force. Um, uh, the objectives here are to establish a, a common global ecosystem for identity and access control for the EOSC. And finally, the third um, task force is on a technical interoperability of uh, data and services. Um, and the outcomes of that um, group uh, will be presented by John. And uh, the uh, um, yeah, intention there is to enable EOSC projects such as EOSC Future and others, and also EOSC resource providers to achieve interoperability between the data and the services. After these short presentations, we will split up in breakout sessions. I think we will have five and you can freely choose which one, which one you want to um, join within the breakout sessions. We have uh, further presentations also from uh, people who are external. And uh, the idea is to, to get an uh, like broad um, picture of um, on the or on the topics um, of the three working groups after the breakout sessions at like 3.30. We will uh, reconvene here in this um, Zoom room and I would like the panel chairs to wrap up um, the discussions they had in the breakout sessions. So that is what I wanted to um, uh, mention as the introduction and now I would like the first um, task force group to present uh, their um, results and that will be given by Salin from um, ETHZ from Zurich and she will be talking about the charter of the infrastructure for quality research software. It's yours, please. Thanks Klaus. Hi. Um, so I will be representing my, four, uh, my three other coordinators to present this, uh, our work on infrastructure for quality research software. So next slide, please. So uh, I first want to thank all the people uh, who have been helping us to define this particular charter. So they have offered very valuable feedbacks uh, that make the charter into what the state that it is currently in. So thank you all. Next, please. So uh, I will share with you now the background and objectives of this particular uh, task force. So when we were beginning to define the charter, the first thing we tried to do was to define what is research software and the quality and what is quality in this case. So we finally managed to come to a definition for research software and we define it as follows. Software that is produced by researchers and used as an enabler for scientific activities. However, for quality, we decide that it is a criteria that should be defined as a task within the uh, task force because it would be very important where that we get the community feedback and then we can come up with an unbiased definition. So there are three objectives that we focus on for this task force. The first one is the to foster the development and deployment of tools and services to enable sharing, reuse, and reusing of uh, research software. The second objective was to improve the quality of research software, not just technically, but also from an organizational point of view, so that 
uh, this software can be used, it can be offered via EOS. And the third objective was something that we uh, discussed very intensely, which is how to give recognition to software developers and maintainers of research software uh, that such as their activities can be seen on par as uh, publications and data in the open science landscape. So these are the three objectives we really uh, we will be focusing on. Next, please. So this is the core activities. Uh, so uh, the core activities that we will be next. So the, the first one would be community landscape. Uh, what we will be focusing here is really engaging uh, the community to get what they are doing, their standards, their tools, their platforms, the approaches, the methods, uh, their best practices and so on. Ultimately, what we want to get is an actionable recommendation that we can uh, share with the uh, with yours and uh, uh, the users of yours. Next, please. The next uh, is the uh, we are focused on quality software here. As I mentioned before, the most important task is to provide an unbiased measurement of quality and impact based on qualitative and quantitative uh, measure, uh, methodology that we want to work with the community to define. Next, please. And the fourth one is the EOS uh, service implementation, uh, where this we would like to share this uh, documentation or report with the community and also work on top of it uh, to extend it further based on what we are trying to achieve within this particular task force. Next, please. And finally, the last core activity is that we would like to ensure that the software could be sustained uh, when the funding runs out and that we have processes and um, best practices so that we can help the software developers to ensure that. So next please. So to do so, uh, of course, uh, uh, we will be providing some EO support and also education, training and career developments. Next please. So uh, this particular task force is expected to last 24 months uh, with the first phase for evaluation and then uh, focusing on uh, activities uh, that we have selected in the next year. So I will not, uh, so that we have established some steps uh, on how to uh, allow us to work through the first phase. But in particular, we highlighted that we need to outreach, outreach is a very important part of our work methodology. So we intend to engage the EOS communities and also external communities tools uh, by, by leveraging on the connection of our members in the task force and also other avenues like meetings, workshops, focus groups. Next, please. So, Just a second, could, uh, could the host and the co-host please uh, turn off uh, your mics because we have an echo. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, no problem. So we are expecting uh, this would be a big call for us. So we have uh, we are planning to accept 30 to 50 people for the new task force membership because we have already received a lot of people who wanted to be involved uh, while we're writing the charter. So uh, once again, uh, if you're interested, please try to uh, join uh, to, to respond to the call. So I would like to thank again everyone who have helped in drafting this charter. Thanks, Klaus. I'll hand it back to you. Okay, thank you very much. Again, um, please turn off your mics, uh, the host and the co-host. The others have turned off automatically because otherwise we have this echo. Thank you very much, Selene. And I now come to the um, next um, uh, task force, which is on the uh, AAI. And I think uh, the presentation will be given. Let me just uh, check on my list. Terribly sorry, I mixed up all my materials. Anyway, just start. Hello, uh, this is this is Chris Kanelopoulos uh, from from Zeant. Uh, I'm representing uh, the work that um, we have done uh, with the other three coordinators of the task force, but also with with a wider list of members of the initial editorial board. And I would like to thank everyone. So first of all, uh, what I would like to say about the uh, task force on AI, this is not something that we start from scratch. Um, there has been a lot of uh, work happening within this area in, in, let me say, the last almost uh, 10 years uh, with the art community and edges uh, and uh, with the film for 
for our community, which have been looking to how to use uh, federal management for research collaboration. Um, uh, the SRIA document does provide very interesting input insight of, of the requirements and gaps uh, that we need to be looking into for the USKI. But uh, perhaps the most important item right now, which I think synthesizes everything else together, is the report from the previous task force that concluded its work uh, at the end of 2020 and basically provide us an um, initial roadmap of where we're going to do EUSKI and uh, the task force, basically this task force intends to build upon that, extend and, and uh, go forward with the EUSKI. Next slide, please. So um, uh, something that perhaps I have to say, and I think this is very important, uh, this is one of the items of the previous task force, but we fully embrace this also the, in, in this task force are the guiding principles. What we need to keep uh, on our horizon to make sure that we do not um, uh, go away from these very basic principles. And these are, first, that the user experience is the first measure of success for what we'll be doing with the EOSKI. All trust flows from the communities, the collaborations, the research that are putting together and how to enable them. And last but not least, there is no center in the distributed system. Uh, what we are designing, we always need to keep this in mind, involves many parties, many actors, and we cannot consider uh, a centralized system um, uh, that could perhaps look nice on paper, but is not implementable in, in real life. Next slide, please. The main aim of, of this uh, task force is basically to evolve the EOSK architecture uh, as, as we have received it from the previous uh, task force and the EOSK Federation, which is the new thing that came out from the previous task force to see where we are and how, how we push this forward. And of course, following the ARC blueprint architecture and the ARC interoperability guidelines, but also contributing to those. And we'll talk a bit more about this in a few moments. Um, we need to identify and assess again, and that's something we'll continue to do, the requirements and the gaps. And that's something that has to be a continuous process. And, and of course, it's not something that we can do in isolation. We have to do this in collaboration uh, with other, the other EOSC task forces because AI is, is a topic that touches many areas of the technical interoperability, but also with bodies outside of the European Open Science Cloud, with other EOSC projects and community bodies, international bodies like, like AGES. Uh, last but not least, uh, an aim for this uh, for the task force is basically to identify and assess the governance models for the EUSK AI, which is now being implemented by the EUSK Future Project, um, but we need to see beyond that. Next nice slide, please. So the core activities, we have three core activities, basically to develop the next version of the EUSK architecture. And this will come in two versions. We plan to release one version in version 2022, effectively addressing the gaps and the requirements that the previous task force has captured and has published in, the, in, in that report. And then another version at the end of 2023, and I already give you a hint that we are going for a 20 month period, uh, where basically we're going to be looking into the gaps and requirements that we will identify during the next year. Um, the second activity is exactly the activity of, of engaging with the stakeholders in identifying new cases and new requirements. And again, this will come in two, in two cycles. The first cycle will be at the end of, of uh, 2022, and it will provide basically the feed into the EOSK architecture for 2023. But also we plan to complete the work of the task force with a version of use cases and requirements at the end of the task force 2023 that we hope it will be uh, fed to whatever will follow up afterwards. Uh, the last activity is about the governance models and, and uh, we want to provide a report on the, on the possible governance models for the USK AI and that should come at the end of 2022. Next slide please. Um, how we're going to work, we plan basically the work will be basically happening remotely. Uh, they do collaboration through the mailing list. We will have uh, regular video calls, probably bi-weekly. This needs to be discussed when the task force is, is, is formulated. We do envisage having four workshops co-located with high profile events to publicize 
uh, the, the results of the, of the task force, but also to engage in discussions with, with the wider community. Of course, for all deliverables, we do plan to have public consultations. And um, uh, those, as I will mention in a few moments, the task force will be open, basically decisions will be based on the principle of rough consensus within the task force. Um, the plan duration is 24 months, as I mentioned uh, a few seconds ago. Next slide, please. Uh, regarding dependencies and the membership, um, as I said, the task force with, of course, liaise with the other task forces within within um, uh, within EOSC, uh, the technical task forces, but also I do see a lot of potential for discussing about the onboarding process because the AI aspect is involved within the onboarding process. Um, we will seek input from research communities, infrastructure providers, and service providers and other stakeholders. And of course, I have to say that we will work very closely with the implementation projects, like EOS Future is implementing right now uh, the, uh, the EOS KEI following the guidance of, of the previous task force, of the previous task force. We need to work closely with them, but also with the other EOS uh, implementation projects and make sure that we bring everybody together to create a consistent view and vision of where we're going to go towards. This is why this task force is open to all AI experts from research communities, infrastructure providers and service providers. And we really want to make this a very open forum for having the discussion of where we want to take EOSK AI towards. And um, with this, I believe that was my last slide. Thank you very much, uh, Christos, uh, for this ignition talk. And we just continue with the last task force, um, which, and the presentation will be given by Joan. It's about the technical interoperability of data and services. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Well, this is one of the technical challenges on EOX, as, as it was previously explained here, it appears in the first place, but of course, this is not a question of being the first or the last, it's just a list. Uh, next, please. And uh, yeah, we have a charter. We completed that task and now it's time to put the charter into action. Next, please. So the main aims of, uh, as stated in the charter, are to take uh, the EOX interoperability framework as a starting point for developing the, the EOX core and exchange. And uh, the EOX core and exchange will adopt a system of system approach uh, that means that uh, we need to work together, but at the same time, we need to respect the diversity of the different discrete components and disciplines, uh, both from a semantic and technical level. So there will be a strong focus on interworking uh, of, those, of those components and not so in harmonization. Next. So this is the more complex uh, slide that I have. Uh, the core activities are the following. Uh, the first, uh, we want to guide uh, uh, the principles of interoperability, or we want to know those principles uh, from user experience, uh, building on the, the outputs of the interoperability framework working group. And this is going to result in the first principles document. We want to analyze the existing systems and the interoperability standards, and that will result in a landscape overview, uh, also not only with what we have, but with what we do not have, the gaps. Uh, and uh, from that, we will see how to populate those gaps, promote the uh, alignment between the EOX standards and the instructive related major activities, then we will do a classification of the categories of services based on data search, data access, data analytics, data visualizations. And we need the perspective of uh, various stakeholders there. And uh, we will also identify uh, and specify a minimum set of functionalities that are that are necessary. And this is going to result in two ways, uh, sorry, in two step deliverable. One draft technical architecture uh, that focus on the those categories and the minimum set of functionalities, uh, high level APIs, 
service discovery, etc. And then a more final technical architecture description uh, of the AOG interoperability framework, including examples of adaptation uh, and hints for major existing solutions. And uh, finally, we will also in parallel promote the consumption of the EOX interoperability standards and services. Next. That is easy to explain. Uh, two years. Next. Uh, working methodology. Mm, we want to be con in constantly in contact. We are not inventing anything new. We will do, we will do mailing uh, regularly. But we also want to regularly meet by teleconferences. Uh, we want to work in short incremental steps uh, and quick feedback cycles, and we believe that's the best uh, way to do it. But nevertheless, since we need to know uh, things from everybody, from every community, we will have these two workshops per year collocated with, with all high profile events uh, to contact the community at large. And uh, we will have an early plan uh, defined and we will evaluate and reevaluate and update every five months for time then. Next. We depend on, of course, on other activities. We know about that. Uh, the semantic interoperability is important for, for us. The permanent identifiers policy and implementation, the, the fair uh, metrics and data quality, and uh, this thing about uh, authentication, authorization, and, and the general architecture to engage that. Here, just one project about fair metrics and data quality that could help us, but there are more. Uh, also, national activities could help us. Uh, thematic data centers, data repository owners, large and heterogeneous federations of infrastructures, and high performance computer centers. And uh, yeah, well, there are parallel activities happening in the Research Data Alliance, like the Research Data Repository Interoperability Working Group, uh, that, well, we will keep communicating with them too. Uh, next. Uh, so, membership. We want a wide participation to ensure the acceptance, including stakeholders from several EOX projects, additional experts to gather new profiles, and uh, other major European public cloud projects such as Gaia X and Euro HPC. Uh, from the expertise we, we need, technical expertise in interoperability pro protocols from different uh, standards organizations, like the OGC and the W3C, uh, technical expertise on data, format metadata, large and heterogeneous federation infrastructure expertise, services in general, I will not repeat the enumeration, and also uh, on security of, 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 those, of those protocols and services. Uh, representatives of the thematic communities, of course, this could come from the AOX projects and, and other task force, we will see, and the uh, end users in the research communities, uh, interdisciplinary users and data scientists. And I believe that is all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, John. Uh, thank you also to Christos and Salain. We are perfectly in time. And uh, now the uh, agenda for C is that we split up into uh, uh, breakout uh, rooms and um, uh, we have I think five. Uh, the first one will be on um, the AAI architecture chaired by Marina. There we have uh, like different um, presentations. We have a second one on uh, infrastructure for quality research and, and then we have three uh, breakout sessions related to interoperability. Um, uh, the first one is um, uh, interoperability challenges for thematic communities. Next one is on uh, cross-cutting topics, cross-cutting interoperability uh, challenges. And the fifth one, I think, is uh, the one to increase service offers of the EOSC. Now, you have the choice uh, to jump into one. You have also the option, uh, to, you know, in between to move from one breakout session to the other. We have now um, uh, the breakout sessions running until 4.30. And um, I would like uh, to, to ask the chairs to uh, track the time. 
And then I think uh, Rob, um, at uh, 3.30, you will automatically close uh, the breakout session so that the uh, participants will be guided back here to the uh, plenary. Is that correct, Rob? Yes. Um, I also leave uh, the floor to, to my colleague Federico, who will also provide further instructions on, on how the breakouts will, will work. Okay. okay. Hello, everyone. And I think everybody's ready now. Uh, just give me a couple of minutes to include all the speakers in the breakouts. So it will be done in a minute. All back. Okay, we are all back from uh, the session rooms. I, I couldn't attend um, all the breakouts. I was in the one of uh, dealing with infrastructure for quality research software. And there I could really follow very insightful talks pertaining to infrastructure for quality research software. And also the external uh, presenters provided additional perspectives on what could be dealt with in uh, the future task forces. I now would like to uh, um, ask the one, two, three, four, five chairs of the uh, breakout sessions to briefly wrap up um, their session. And on my list um, is um, Marina first. So uh, from the AAI um, breakout. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I will first try to give a summary of the four presentations uh, that we had during our session. Uh, so we had the opportunity to hear, first of all, about the result of AI activities in EOS Hub project. This was the first presentation that we had. But also in the last presentation, you can see in the list, we also hear about what are the plans for AI in EOS future looking forward. Uh, then I think many of the things that we heard there were actually echoed in two presentations that we had from the perspective of the RIs and the research communities. And we heard about the AI implementation of Umbrella ID and also from the environmental RIs. So let me try to pick up some uh, main top, uh, points, although it's, uh, it's quite difficult to do it in, this, in a short time frame. Um, so first of all, uh, from uh, the presentation of the AI integration activities in EOS Hub, we heard how the goal was to contribute to the EOS infrastructure implementation roadmap and to enable seamless access to researchers. They have built on existing interoperable AI solutions from EGI, UDAT, Giant, and Indigo. Uh, we have heard during the presentation what were the requirements for end users and for service providers. And also very interesting that also the both Umbrella ID and Envy. Uh, by building their AIs have gone through a similar study of actually understanding the requirements and making sure that they are reflected in the AI which is built. Uh, but most important for the work on INEOS Hub was to support different IDPs, service providers to support interoperability and security. And of course, the user experience comes first. So user registers once, can access different types of services uh, and so on. So during the project, they demonstrated the technical ability for interoperability. Um, and they also came out uh, with the different gaps um, and still things to, to pick up in, in the future implementation of the EOSK AI. Then I think uh, to move on to the Umbrella ID, I think this was very interesting because we heard how Umbrella AI uh, has actually grown from 2012 when it started to uh, 2018. And the motivation for a change was actually EOSC and the need to integrate with EOSC uh, to be interoperable, to meet the GDPR requirements, but also many security concerns. So the old AI wasn't sufficient anymore. Uh, so for them, Giant was chosen as a trusted provider for TNI services, and they're using the Giant Edu Teams platform. Uh, in the future, they're also planning to decommission current umbrella IDP and to fully embrace and use uh, this platform. Also very good to hear is that the Arc Blueprint architecture is being used by all of this work and all of this implementation. So this is important for the interoperability. Next to move on the third presentation we had, which is from, which was from environmental RIs, uh, which I think was uh, interesting because it actually showed another uh, part that uh, is also important when building AI and this is to build uh, the policy uh, and uh, to build all the guidelines. 
So they are uh, doing a parallel work together with actually building the technical solution, making sure that uh, they are compliant with GDPR, with security, with pri privacy and everything else. Um, they, uh, we got to hear uh, five conclusions that came out from their project, which are very, very interesting. I think I invite everybody to look to the presentation. Some of that is that um, governance uh, and the leadership of these projects needs to know that this is a very big effort and they need to understand uh, well the needed uh, policy and also the uh, solutions, uh, the IT solutions behind. And finally, in the last presentation, we heard uh, from Christos about the future, in EOS future, about how EOS KEI will look like. Uh, many of the things that uh, Christos mentioned previously in the talk about the task force are repeated here. And these are, this is what, what are the uh, first principles. Uh, they will be reflected in the implementation of EOS KEI and EOS Federation. We also heard about some challenges um, that will be addressed and we heard the roadmap. Uh, so basically in month six, we will have EOS Federation operational where re researchers can consume resources from their collaboration. My, month 18, uh, they will be able to consume resources provided by other infrastructures and in month 30, researchers can do full cycle of their research. Of course, much more details in the presentation, just, this is just a high level summary. Um, and of course, the AI Federation uh, that should uh, establish the trust between our eyes and communities to be seamless. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much for the, this comprehensive overview. It seems that EOSC Future has a clear roadmap of what to do in that field. So the future task force is well advised to link up with the EOSC Future project to see what, they, uh, yes. what their plans are. Um, very good. Thank you, Marina. I would like to continue with uh, Serene from um, uh, Zurich uh, to briefly report about the infrastructure quality research software uh, breakout session. Serene, please. Thanks, Klaus. So we have uh, five presentations in this uh, session. Uh, so the first one, uh, which is your uh, Synergy project uh, SQA as a service platform under Infra EOS. So this this was a very uh, pro, uh, project that we really uh, believe that there is a lot of synergies with the task force. So the ad, so so they will be providing pipeline as a service DevOps plus quality assessment and awarding. So this this we really see. Uh, as very interesting, in particularly they, they have this open batch concept for uh, awarding uh, the uh, developers who, uh, who, who, who have uh, quality software. So they have three categories for that. I think bronze, silver and gold. So we were thinking if this is something we could leverage on, uh, it is currently a POC, but in the long term, if we work together, perhaps something good will come up from it. So this is uh, a first potential collaboration. For the second uh, talk, which is uh, towards reusable research software. So this, this uh, talk, there were many practical challenges uh, that were shared uh, about trying to enable reusable software. And so basically, the reusables, uh, reusability uh, normally, for example, in as a computer scientist like me, we think of containers and believe once you put it in a container, it works. But uh, this is not something so uh, easy for domain scientists because they don't really get into the computer science domain and say, hey, what is a container? How do I build it up? How do I set it up? And this becomes challenging and practically. Of course, there are other considerations. We have an interesting discussion about it. So uh, the presenter, uh, Daniel, highlighted that the biggest challenge he faced was actually more human and culture, where people are find it hard to actually uh, maintain quality software. Uh, because they are unsure if things they write is good quality or not, and they are hesitant to share it and so on. So this is something that likely we will also face in our task force. So it is it is very interesting and useful uh, to get the, this insight from this particular project. So we ex we hope that they will also work closely with us in the future. The third project is uh, the talk is NI uh, for OS Europe. Uh, pre-production environment. So uh, Dukan actually stepped in for uh, his colleague Sonia 
so thanks again, uh, Dusan. So he shares with us a pre-production environment and it's a, it is a very comprehensive pre-production with monitoring, uh, um, help desk and so on. So in my opinion, it is closer to production than pre-production, even though it was supposed to provide that. So originally I was planning to ask him if uh, this would be something that, for example, uh, some developers uh, who wants to check uh, their, their software with CI CD processes could run on it. Uh, unfortunately, we ran off time and did not manage to, uh, to have a chat with him. So the fourth talk uh, is OSF and improving the research, uh, researcher experience. So this is also a very interesting talk where uh, reproducibility and reusability is again focused, but it really went beyond that. They have a whole ecosystem to, to really enable open science um, that goes beyond this task force. So I, so this is something that they were doing in the US and EOS uh, would have beyond this world task force, many other uh, task forces call uh, and other, other in, I, I don't know what is correct, some other projects that uh, are working on various aspects that could benefit from uh, chatting with this particular group. Uh, so again, we did not manage to talk to them more, but I actually have also many uh, questions that I would have loved to chat with them. So our final talk is a lightning talk, which uh, is about EGI at DB. There, a potential platform that we could use to share our software catalog is presented. So uh, it is a very interesting uh, um, software catalog. Uh, of course, uh, we would we would take that into consideration uh, in the future uh, within the task force to see if it would be something to help us. So that is my summary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my impression also after you, I've heard and listened to your summary is that since research software or quality research software is such a young topic, one of the challenges for this task force will be to identify all the synergies um, between the ongoing activities and then, yeah, um, uh, try to, to find a way how these activities can be integrated with one another. I mean, we, we listened to reusability of research software, we listened to award for quality uh, research software award systems, pre-production environments. So um, I, I think, at least in my um, perception, we have other task forces where um, we already can see more convergence and here one of the activities and outcomes should also, or could be like a path towards more convergence in that field. And this is because it's relatively new and young. Thank you very much, Sarin. Thank you very much to all the speakers in that breakout session. We move on to interoperability challenges for thematic communities. Johan, please. Yeah. We, we had these five uh, presentations that, that you all see uh my interpretation is that we had andreas gregorios and mark presenting every hub neanias and escape and those are three different infrastructures thematic infrastructures let's call it that way uh, the first is for geoscience the second one it was a little bit heterogeneous about energy atmosphere climate underwater and space and the third one was about astronomy and particle physics. They all talk about catalogs, data access. Uh, Scape talks about data analytics. Uh, Envy Plus talks about Jupyter notebooks and uh, Spark UL. Uh, Neanias talks about identification, data publication formats. But my conclusion is they, they have a clear idea on how to interoperate inside their research infrastructure. Um, some of them have years of experience doing, doing that. It took a while, but they know how to do it now. They solve the issues in a similar, but not equal way. And now the challenge is, can we set a system of systems um, that uh, creates the infra, the the European Open Science Cloud, because in that European Open Science Cloud, those infrastructures that were complex themselves become just a node, become just a single node. And this is going to be the real the real challenge. And then Laura came and told, uh, told us about how to combine research objects. And this 
uh, this was kind of inspiring because you have research ob objects coming from different uh, data infrastructures that, that we were talking before, and you could combine them even if it has sensible information or, or, or you know, private information, private data on them. And uh, you define those workflows and you document the provenance of the results based on those workflows, and you have your results. Those results are going to be exposed in scientific publications. And then Peter told us uh, how to how open knowledge maps could help in to have a better discovery of knowledge in the lake of publications in this amount, uh, enormous, humongous amount of publications that, that, that are out there. Uh, they use some kind of a semantic classification as far as I understood to improve the discovery. And that's not the end because then you discover those papers, you have new research questions, and you start again, you need, you need new data, uh, you need new workflows and new operations, and that's the whole cycle that the, the EOP should, uh, should handle. And uh, that is going to be difficult, but uh, there is a lot of experience in, in those infrastructures that we have to learn about. Thank you very much, John. Thank you to all the speakers. From my own experience, I can confirm that interoperability with un within one thematic community is already kind of complex. We are building infrastructures for economics. And this is, I mean, yeah, considered to be one community, but if you dive deeper into the field, you become very um, um, it, it becomes very clear that um, there is, for example, the economics, uh, we have the business management people and they have completely different expectations when it comes to research data management. If we take uh, the, uh, the design concept of the EOSC Future Project, which um, thinks of a system of system, I think the challenge here is not only to technically link up uh, the uh, different systems but also the like uh, the, the the content the uh, semantics within each of the thematic communities i think that will be an important aspect um, for the future work of this um, task force thank you very much uh, joan and i would like to continue with the cross-cutting uh, challenges now we cross um, the disciplinary boundaries and john please thanks klaus and your comment just then touched it just touched on a part of the conversation we have, which I'll come to it in a moment. Um, so we had five talks. Um, the first, I'll summarize them very briefly. The first was uh, Phoenix, which is a set of common services that have been agreed across uh, six supercomputing sites. But they're not just about HPC. They're also about cloud and virtual machines and data and federation activities such as AAI and the like. Um, and these are a common set of services developed by, the, by these providers, which they expect the research com communities to uh, build on to provide the sort of higher level services that they will use. They have a giant as a subcontractor who will run the central, central proxy IDP. And um, they're in discussion with other stakeholders about how those access decisions will be made. So that was the first talk. The second one was um, from EOSC Future um, about enabling resource composability. Um, EOSC Future uh, is obviously charged with delivering the kind of glue layer that's going to allow the composition of resources across infrastructures. So it's going to be providing APIs and metadata interoperability frameworks, etc. Um, we saw the roadmap that EOSC Future have for the next 30 months with three key milestones and one in each September and we that invoked some questions about what can really be achieved by this September which is their first milestone and that was interesting. Um, we saw an architecture diagram with four different types of interoperability. I'm not sure I'll get these right now but I think one of them was sort of interoperability with the core, the second was with the e-infrastructure services um, the second, the third was between horizontal services and the fourth, which um, the speaker said, which Diego said was going to be the hardest, was interoperability between the thematic services. That's uh, similar to what you were just saying, Hugo. Um, um, Klaus. 
So that was the second. The third talk was from EOSC Hub. Um, so just as EOSC Future was uh, planned for the future, EOSC Hub was a report on what has been achieved by the project, which has recently ended. So it was a summary of the work. Um, they produced interoperability guidelines for EOSC um, using a reference technical architecture. They had six guidelines for core services and 12 for EOSC exchange services. Uh, lots of examples of how to build composed services from those, which uh, is very interesting. And a uh, discussion about the interoperability guidelines, which are obviously going to provide important input to EOSC future work um, on interoperability. And um, it's clear that this these two projects are kind of moving smoothly from one to the other. Uh, the fourth talk from EOSC Nordic about service interoperability framework. Um, so they took as a baseline two different things, obviously the EOSC interoperability framework, but also the European interoperability framework, which is about public services rather than IT services. Um, their focus is on, um, sorry, the focus is on recommendations that would improve um, service interoperability across the service providers, and they're considering a wide diversity of providers of the services. Um, they're looking at use cases from different research communities um, and trying to abstract from that, looking for practical rules for interoperability uh, that take both the end user and the service provider into consideration. Uh, their report at the moment of 18 pages, so quite accessible, um, is available on their website. The final talk in the session was um, from Science Mesh from CERN. Uh, goals to build distributed. Their goal is to build a distributed, interoperable mesh of sites, leveraging on existing file synchronizations and serving, sharing services. Um, this was uh, Hugo, and he gave a very interesting analogy around an island where communication islands, where communication within islands is easy, but across islands is very difficult and try to put up as an alternative to that, the implementation of uh, this um, interoperation, interoperability platform IOP, which uh, can be used to quickly establish communication between the different nodes. Um, it's fully decentralized and uh, enables each site to keep sovereignty over its own data and services. Uh, already has 400,000 users um, across 130 organizations. Um, and it's seen as an easy way to enable communication and interoperation across nodes uh, much more readily than uh, waiting for the development and the deployment of standards. So those were the five talks. We then had a discussion. Um, we had about 10 minutes for discussion, and the main subject there was really how we could coordinate across all the different activities. It was very evident listening to the talks that there's lots of work going on in lots of different places and that the term interoperability can be can mean different things. There's obviously a core piece of work around EOSC Future, which is looking at some aspects of interoperability, but I don't think it covered all the things that were covered by all the talks. So there was a, a very interesting discussion there about how to um, coordinate between the work of EOS Future, the implementation work being done by EOS Future and other projects, and the task force on interoperability. And how can the task force steer all the implementation work that's going on in the projects um, and coordinate across that, which is clearly a, a major challenge. Okay. And that's Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, in view of time, I would directly uh, continue with Anastas. Uh, to uh, briefly report about uh, the uh, breakout session on interoperability challenges to increase service offers. Anastas, Thank please. you. Thank you, Klaus. I will try to do a very brief uh, recap of the talks. We had five talks. We started with the DICE use cases, the DICE project and the use cases in three areas, biomedicine, local uh, radio astronomy, and environmental uh, science. The idea is to showcase that this activity generated within these use cases will contribute to the growth of the EOSC by attracting new users and improving data service composability, enhancing 
the chances of interdisciplinary reuse of data and uh, and uh, complementing the data and uh, and uh, computation. Uh, the next talk was by uh, about the Open Air Connect, which is an open research gateway for research communities. Again, the goal pretty much the same: lower the barriers, lower the barriers that hinder the adoption of open science of the of the end users by trying to showcase it within uh, uh, within uh, this uh, dashboard. Uh, the third uh, talk was the talk uh, by Mark and his team and uh, was showcasing what Aggie Ace projects is doing on the data interoperability architectures. We saw something about the data ecosystems and ecospaces in three different uh, uh, data communities, the climate biodiversity and uh, data for, from the sea. Uh, the point that we picked up, all of us picked up, was that uh, may, trying to make the data beyond fair. We heard interesting uh, statements this morning on the symposium about how easy or hard it is to make a data fair. The idea here there was to make data beyond fair, beyond, be it make it more quality uh, with a higher quality, may build in trust, etc. Et um, uh, the fourth talk was about the open science graph, uh, about uh, joining the theoretical models and the technological implementations. The open air research graph is envisaged to be a, a part of the EOSC resource catalog that will somehow map the scientific production services, funders and repositories. And it's very important to be somehow integrated into the EOSC interoperability framework. And finally, we had the last, last talk, which was about the, the research objects, the Reliance project work on the research objects as the key enablers that will support the implementation of the, of the FAIR principles and the, uh, bringing systematic change to open science practices within, within EOSC. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have a lot of time for discussion. Uh, we were just in time to, to close before getting back to the main room. So Klaus, back to you. Thank you very much. The fact that we had uh, three breakout sessions on interoperability uh, just shows how complex uh, that topic is and how challenging it will be to cover that within the uh, um, corresponding task force. Um, just to um, wrap up uh, this uh, session, I think the main objective of the session was to uh, um, yeah, deep into uh, um, uh, the different topics of uh, the uh, um, advisory group um, on uh, um, quality research software and interoperability. And we had yesterday the uh, uh, high level presentations by uh, um, Ignacio, myself and the other colleagues. And today the intention was to get more detailed information of what could be covered in the future in the breakout sessions. I hope in the um, task forces. I, I hope that the talks in the breakout sessions gave a brief indication um, uh, about uh, what uh, needs to be done, what uh, we have to um, uh, cover within the next two years in the corresponding task forces. Um, I would like to thank all of you. I would like to thank our uh, speakers and also the uh, rapporteurs for um, contributing to this session. And um, I now hand over to, uh, um, I think, uh, Rob, probably, um, or uh, Federico, to um, announce the next uh, session or uh, how uh, the symposium will continue from my side. Again, thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you to the uh, breakout chairs as well as the speakers. Uh, so today is the uh, third day and we go into the final day tomorrow which the theme is uh, implementation priorities. So we begin at nine o'clock. So please be there uh, nine o'clock sharp. Uh, and this uh, first session is the implementation of EOSC, which will be chaired by Suzanne de Michel. Uh, there will be a number of breakouts uh, focusing on the rules of participation in bid policy, uh, community engagement services and data pl uh, platforms community engagement, uh, as well as panels on EOSC readiness and Europe's data world. We'll have a break and then go directly into metadata and data quality session chaired by Sarah Jones. Um, we go into the lunch break, but again, I, uh, I'd like to remind you that we do have a lunch at EOSC clinic and this time featuring Bob Jones, uh, Maria Luisa 
and Maria Luisa Lavitrano as well. Uh, finally, as well, we have um, one of the last sessions is EOSC Symposium and Beyond, where we'll hear from uh, Nicholas Ferguson as well as other speakers um, on, on uh, what will happen to the next, uh, next series. Uh, and finally, we'll have closing remarks from Carol Luther. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, for being here with us on this third day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good afternoon and goodbye.